Hello, I'm Jeff. Hello, I'm Lauren. In this video, we'll be discussing asset classes and why each one is important for investing. So let's dive in. Asset classes are groupings of investments with similar characteristics. All asset classes play an important role in an investor's portfolio. Think of it like a sports team that's composed of various players that have their own roles and responsibilities, but they're all working towards the same objective of winning or in investing, generating investment returns to achieve your goals. And the mix of those asset classes in a portfolio will depend on individual needs, including risk appetites, time horizon, and personal circumstances. For example, a team will focus more on offense at the beginning of the game to try to win. But as the game goes on, they'll focus more towards defense instead in order to protect their lead. Similar in investing. When you have a longer time horizon, you can invest more aggressively to generate more returns. But when you're closer to retirement, you'll want to take on less risk to protect your gains. Stocks, bonds, and cash are all considered traditional asset classes. Think of these like your core members on a sports team, such as offense, defense, and a goalie. There are also alternative asset classes. These include a wide range of investments, including commodities, real estate, infrastructure, digital assets, and even collectibles, for example. You can think of those as your special teams or role players that you would use in special situations or to achieve specific goals. Think of it like your special teams that you would bring on for power plays in hockey, or like bringing somebody on to take a free kick in soccer. Wondering which asset class is best to invest in? Let's break it down. Start off with stocks. Think of stocks like a team's offense. Investing in this asset class can be strategic and lead to big wins or big losses if a poor play is made. When an investor chooses to buy a stock off of a stock exchange, they're taking partial ownership in a public company. The company then uses investors' money to grow parts of their business. The investors then benefit when the company pays the dividends or when the value of their shares increase. Since there is no guarantee of either of these events happening, investing in a stock is more risky than investing in bonds or cash. However, investors have the potential for earning a higher reward over the long term. Think of a team winning the playoffs at the end of the season. They might have experienced lots of wins and losses along the way, but it's the final result that ultimately determine their success. That's where bonds come in. It's important to balance a strong offense with a good defense, especially towards the end of the game in order to protect your lead. Unlike stocks, which involve ownership, bonds are loans that investors make to companies or governments, similar to the way a bank will loan their customers money. Generally speaking, each bond has a maturity date and an interest rate that's agreed to in advance. When an investor chooses to buy a bond, they typically receive regular income until either the bond reaches its maturity date or they decide to sell the security. This is great for someone who requires monthly income, such as a retiree. Since bonds are considered low risk, they're often viewed like the defense on a sports team and generally generate lower returns than equities. Cash is an important asset class as well and is typically used for short-term spending needs. Holding cash in a piggy bank or a savings account is generally considered safe and is generally considered as the lowest risk investment option. Think of it like a goalie. It's the last line of defense. Cash equivalents are low risk alternatives to cash, such as high interest savings accounts and GICs. You may have heard about these at your bank. The benefit of this over cash is that they can generate a little bit of interest without taking on too much risk which can help offset inflation. But with these asset classes, generally a minimum time horizon is required, meaning investors may not always have access to their money when they want it. This concept is generally known as not having as much liquidity. So now let's talk about alternative asset classes. These are outside your traditional asset classes of cash, equities, and bonds. Think of them like your special teams or role players that you can use to either dial up the defense or dial up the offense and to add balance to your portfolio. Real estate is a very common alternative asset. Investors can gain exposure to this asset class by either purchasing a physical property or investing in a fund called a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust. Commodities are popular too. They are either natural resources or raw materials like oil, gas, silver, copper, 
amongst others. Even collectibles can be considered an alternative asset class. These could include vintage cars, art, and even baseball cards. But they don't have to be physical. Digital asset classes can also be considered alternative asset classes. Think of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, non-fungible tokens or NFTs, digital art, or even virtual property. So how do all of these asset classes fit together? Through a very important investing concept called diversification. So I'm sure you heard of the expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversification is the process of investing in many securities and asset classes to shift your risk and return instead of concentrating your portfolio. The main goal of diversification is to lower risk and increase your investment opportunity over the long term. Asset classes all behave differently. As investors' needs change or you get closer to achieving your goal, such as savings for college and university, you may have to make changes to your investment portfolio. So to summarize, today we reviewed several asset classes, including cash, bonds, equities, and alternative assets. We also talked about diversification, which is an important concept to help reduce risk and possibly enhance returns within your portfolio. So remember, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Thank you for watching.